2 a.m. and she calls me cause I'm still awake Can you help me unravel my latest mistake? Dropped a stitch about 17 rows behind me There's no way I can pick it up from where I am This is so frustrating Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the Sittin' and Knittin' podcast. I am your host, Diana. You can find me as His Handmaid on Ravelry, Clerk, and Google Plus, I am His Handmaid H. On Twitter, I am His Handmaid One. You can find the podcast show notes at sittinandknittinpodcast.blogspot.com, and you can find the podcast as Sitting and Knitting Podcast on Blip and on iTunes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, first of all, I have some thank yous to give out. I'd like to thank everyone who's contacted me through private message or on the, on the message boards in the Ravelry group. I so appreciate the communication with other knitters and getting to know you all. And so I want to thank everyone who has been in contact with me. It makes the podcast a lot of fun to do. Because as I said in the beginning, it's not my podcast, but our podcast. So thank you for that. I do have some formal thank yous to give out. And um, I have three more star ratings on iTunes. And I'd like to thank those of you who went over there and left a star rating. I'd also like to thank Sally from Idaho for leaving a review. And I just appreciate that. Um, I'm not sure how it all works, but I hear other podcasters say that it helps knitting podcasts to come up faster if people are searching for knitting podcasts. So thank you for that. And thank you for your kind words, Sally. So I would encourage you all to, if you have time, and I know how it is, and sometimes you just never get over to the iTunes store, but if you have time, leave a review for some of your other um, favorite podcasts. Um, I would also like to say a thank you to Desiree, and she is Knitty Girl on Ravelry. And Desiree designed the Sittin' and Knittin' bat banner and button that you will see if you go to the Ravelry group. And I'll see if I can, I'm not sure if I can get it on iTunes. Again, I'm not really uh, inclined that way as far as computer savvy. But anyway, we do have a banner and button now. And thank you, Desiree. I posted in the um, Ravelry group for volunteer, I think it's, designers to design um, a banner or button and Desiree Nitty Girl responded and she was very kind and it was a joy to work with her. So thank you Nitty Girl for that. Um, we have 87 members, not counting me and the girls, in our Ravelry group and so that's exciting and uh, we have a lot of introductions and I do want to take time to um, say Hello to the ones who have posted introductions in the thread. I did try to respond to each introduction personally. And one thing I do appreciate about the introductions is that they're not just directed to me. A lot of people say, hi, Diana, and everybody else in the group. And I, and I appreciate that because I want our group to be um, not just focused on me or asking me questions, but a communication between all the viewers who watch the Sitting and Knitting podcast. So thank you for that. Uh, let's see, we had introductions from Natalie from Detroit and her sister Arletha from Detroit. And I don't think the two knew that each other was gonna join the group the way they posted. So that was kind of fun. Um, we have Sue from Australia. Welcome and thank you for introducing yourself. We have Martha from New York and we have Maya uh, and she, I believe, is from Canada. She is from Canada and she has the Mooney Knits podcast. And I've been enjoying her podcast. She knits uh, some very beautiful items. And uh, so she's on a little hiatus for a few weeks. So I want to get a chance to go and look back at her podcast. But that's Maya. Um, we have Marsha. I'm sorry, Marshila. I'm very sorry for pronouncing that wrong. And she's from Oregon. We have Diane from Missouri. We have Heather from England, Cindy from Indiana, Kristen also from Detroit, and Vicki Lynn from Detroit. 
we have Linda from Pennsylvania, another Diana from Missouri, Carrie from Connecticut, Carol from Indiana, and Sally from Idaho. We have Liz from here in Ohio, and Ellen from Illinois. We have Karen from Arizona. We have Steffi from Germany and Nancy from Illinois. Thank you all for posting introductions um, in the group. And like I said, it's not mandatory or anything like that. I, I do enjoy the girls and I reading the introductions. And so if you feel so inclined, just come and introduce yourself. Um, we have a lot on the agenda today, but I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. And I'm not gonna even list the agenda because Agendas to me are like recipes. They're just kind of a guideline and they can change. So it all depends on how time goes and things like that if I get to everything that I want to talk about. So we'll just get started on the show. Okay, so last month we had our June share contest where um, I ask you all to post in the Ravelry thread under the June Share contest what knitting is or means to you. And we had about 34 entries, and I decided to do something a little different, a little more personal than the random number generator. And I'm not saying I'm going to be able to do this with future contests because if we get too many entries, I may not be able to keep up, up with it all. But I wrote everyone's names on little slips of paper. And I, I got this idea from the Mooney Knits podcast, Maya. I got this idea from her. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of your names in this teapot. And I'm going to mix it around. And I'm going to have uh, Justice help me to draw a name. So, so that you know that your name is in the teapot. I'm going to read off the names that of the entries. So we had WK, WKN25, we had Aunt T, we have B18, we have Sally from Idaho, we have Whisk Knitter, Grammy, Sandra Rum, Nan Randa, Crazy Knitting Fool, Knitting Fun For Me, Maybe, Rebecca J9, Whipper, Whipper Sticker, or yeah, Whipper Stricker, I'm sorry, uh, Crafty Princess, August Mom 13, CV Water, C. V A W T E R 44. Um, he lives W W J D. Miss Claire. Ebony Hooks 5. Knit Spin Deb. Loopy Liz. Julifer. Knit and Wolf. Deb C Quilts. Hot Ass Knitter, Wisdom, Shepherd's Knits, uh, Delight Tillex, I'm sorry if I, I messed that up, Diane 421, PJ's, B Wing, and Iggy Star. So if you heard your name, you know that you are in this teapot and we are going to fold the names up and kind of wiggle them around and we'll come back and we'll draw for the name okay so i have the names i folded them up and i put them all back in here and i'm shaking them up now this the winner of the contest gets a seven dollar giftable pattern uh, pattern download from ravelry so my lovely daughter justice will reach in there and randomly pick a name. And the winner is Knit for Fun. Knit for Fun. Thank you for entering everybody. I enjoyed, and I'm sure everyone else who got a chance to read that thread enjoyed reading that thread. So thank you very much. Contact me and let me know what Ravelry pattern you would like. 
and we will get that to you. Um, I am going to leave the thread open and I would like for you all to continue to share um, what knitting is or means to you. So I'm not going to lock that thread and I'll leave it open. And thank you to all the members who did post in the thread. So. in my hands. So I can't remember if I had shared with you all last podcast that I was going to try to be a little more monogamous with my knitting instead of being, you know, I feel a little scattered, scattered, or my affections are divided, wondering if I should work on this or if I should work on that or work on that. So I kind of downsized all of my whips and I only have one, um, one work in progress now. And I think, I, be, I believe I put those socks that we talked about last podcast um, in hibernation because they really weren't making me happy. So I didn't want to knit on those right now. So what's in my hands right now is the Cosmic Kaleidoscope Vest. And this is a pattern, a free pattern, a uh, Ravelry download. Um, and the designer's name is Helen Bingham. I am using US4 um, US4 needles to knit this. I am using Madeline Tosh sock in two different colorways. I'm using the Logwood colorway and the Margot colorway. And we talked about that last time. I am about three quarters of the way done with this vest. I am on row 30 and the pattern ends at row 55, but I have read other project notes where uh, they said, uh, different ones said they wish they had knit a little further. And so I think I'm gonna knit a little further. I'm trying to find the top of the vest, maybe, no, this is the top. So I think I'm gonna knit a little further and I have my lovely assistants that are gonna help me try it on I have it on two uh, 40 inch circular needles and a 24 inch circular needle because I wanted to be able to spread it out a little bit for you all so you can see how far I've gotten. It's just a mindless knit. Um, I do, when it comes to the increased rows, um, I do have to pay a little bit more attention. I have 566 stitches on this right now and I have never knit so many stitches at one time and uh, it it just feels like it's going on and on and on. I feel like it's the vest that'll never end. We used to sing a song, it is the song that never ends. And as a matter of fact, I was singing that the other night. It is the vest that never ends to my family. And then the next day I was listening to uh, the Knit More Girls podcast and not their last episode, but the episode before that, Jasmine was saying the exact same thing about her Stephen West Daybreak Shaw. So that must be a, a common thought sometimes when you get into long knitting rows. But anyway, I thought that was funny. So I'm going to try it on so you can see how far it is. Girls, will you help? The girls are going to help me so that I can hopefully try not to drop any of my stitches. Oh, don't spread it too far. And uh, is that the right way? Yeah. Journey. Can you just uh... Okay, I'm gonna turn around. Is it center? Yeah. And that's how it looks, of course, unblocked. Is it okay? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's how it looks unblocked. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the armholes yet. The way that the vest is, and I really should have called the pattern up so you can see again what the finished object looks like. But the way that the vest ends is it kind of has the reverse stockinette showing. So um, I guess I will leave the reverse stockinette on the armholes. I'm not really sure about that. I'll see when I get towards the towards the end. Also, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about a bind off. Um, I'm thinking she suggests a crochet bind off and I'm not sure I want to do that. So I'm going to try to find another bind off that I can do that will make it not curl so much. So right now I have 
30 rows after the armholes. And that brings me to about four inches. I don't know if you can see that, but it's about four inches. And I need it to be at least four more inches to get it to the center where I want it. And I plan to just close it with a shawl pin. So that would be another 60 rows. And I was considering going another until about 75 rows. So we'll see how it goes. But um, that's the Cosmic Kaleidoscope Vest. And I'm on row 30. And I need to go to row maybe 75, <laughs> 60 or 75. So that's basically all that I have been knitting on right now. I do enjoy knitting on it. Um, like I said, it's a mindless knit, but the colors are beautiful. I've knit in public a lot. I've gotten a lot of compliments on the colors. And the Madeline Tosh is just very, it's enjoyable to work with. So that's what's in my hands. So what's out of my hands this week? Well, when I got through halfway through the vest and I was at about, uh, I think it was 277 stitches, um, 288 stitches maybe, it was time to bind off and cast on for the armholes in some kind of way. After I did that and I had increased to my 566 stitches, I went around a couple times and decided to count and I had one off. And instead of just adding the stitch in, I ended up taking it and ripping it back to the armhole, putting all the stitches back on, knitting it again, thinking I had found the stitch, counted again and couldn't find it. So I tinked back this time instead of um, taking the needles out and ripping. So that took me a couple of hours. I ended up giving up in defeat and just going ahead and adding. And I think what happened was when I was supposed to cast on, recast on the stitches for the armhole, I didn't cast on enough. And so I think that's what happened. And I did not, when I take back, actually take out the bind off and cast on. I just went right back to that. So, um, you know, it really is not a big deal in the whole scheme of things, but to me, it was at that time, um, I think this was Saturday. So I decided that needed to go on a timeout. And I knew I, I said I was going to stay monogamous, but I needed to just kind of refocus. And so um, the Positively Knitting podcast, which is hosted by Nicole, who is Hot Ass Knitter, was having an A is OK contest. And she was having this, I believe, through from April through the end of June. And usually I will knit with some acrylics somewhere at some time, but lately I just have not been knitting with acrylic in the past few months. And I wanted to enter the contest. I don't know why. I just, I have had a lot of FOs this month and I don't know. I was just in a mode where, oh, let me see what other contests I can get into because contests are fun. So I thought, well, I really, A is okay sometimes. And I find that I can crochet with acrylic better than I can knit with it. Um, knitting with acrylic and Red Heart just, it squeaks on my needles and I really can't, I don't know, I just don't enjoy it. But it's okay to crochet with. And I do knit occasionally with acrylic too because I do a lot of charity knitting or gift knitting and I don't, always can't afford the super wash wool. For that. So I do knit with it. So anyway, I looked and looked and looked for a baby hat pattern uh, that I could make and, and crochet. And I really, I found one and I'm an average crocheter. I mean, I would say I'm, I'm a little more than a beginner. I think I know what I'm doing, but this hat that I found, I was looking one with a tight gauge because I really don't like the holes that are in crochet. And so I found a, a hat and I'll link it in the show notes where I can't think of the name of it right now, but they did front post double crochet and it seemed like it made a tighter gauge. And so I started to do that 
but I just could not uh, keep count of where I was supposed to increase and everything. It was hard for me to count the stitches when they were in front pro post crochet. So I ripped it all out and I just made up my own thing and did it in regular crochet. So I used Burnett Baby Jackards, Jackwards, I believe it's called. Um, and this is the Cherry Berry colorway. And I used a size G hook. And I just started with the Magic Cast On, which is something new that I just learned off of YouTube. And I started with the Magic Cast On and I cast on double crochet and I increased and double crochet. And then when I came down to here, I did a little front post crochet and then I ended with some single crochet. If you're really interested in what I did, I put the uh, my project notes, um, what I did on my project page, but I just made it up. It's about a 14 inch circumference. And I believe that's newborn size, if I remember correctly. Most of my, the average uh, circumference, circumference of my baby's heads was 14 inches. So I believe this will fit a newborn. Then I also went ahead and um, cast on, or I can't think of chained or started uh, baby booties. And these are the SLK booties by Susan L. Cross, Kraus, and they're a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, they really don't have much shape to them. They have just a tiny bit of shape, but they look more like mittens than booties. I guess they'll be okay. The baby will have to wear socks and then wear these over them, I think, because little toes will peek out. It was okay. I followed the pattern. I ended up using, going a couple of uh, hook sizes down because I wanted a tighter fabric than what I had on here. Here even, you can still see there's just gaps in here that I really did not want um, for the baby's head. So I went down to, I believe it's a C hook and I did the body on a C and then the pattern didn't say so, but I just did the cuff with uh, the G hook. So those are, and they're cute. I don't have anybody in mind for them. Um, so if you know, of a charity that is needing baby hats and booties, newborn size, not preemie, contact me and let me know and I'll just send these off. But it was something I wanted to do because I wanted to be able to enter something in the A is okay uh, contest. So I worked all day, I believe Saturday on these while my knitting is, was in timeout and I really missed my knitting. Um, it was okay, the crocheting was okay, but it just wasn't what I, um, this is something I didn't wanna do very often. And it's just probably because I'm not used to it anymore. I used to do it a lot and I'm not used to it anymore. I'm used to the knitting. So that is what is out of my hands. under the needle. I wanted to talk real quick about what's under my needle and I showed you the pieces of Journey's dress that I had pinned up yesterday, or I'm sorry, last podcast. I got as far as sewing up those pieces and she ironed them out and I need to show her a little bit more about how the iron seems flat, but I haven't gotten to the next process of sewing those together. I've just been concentrating on my knitting and I haven't done any more with that. So there hasn't been much under my needle. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, I showed you this pattern and um, it's actually a dress pattern, a new dress pattern that I said I was gonna try for myself and I ordered it through the mail. And when I got it, I realized it says it's 50 inches long and I'm a tall person. I'm about five, eight, five, eight and a half. And so, I usually wear my dresses about 58 inches. So to make this pattern longer, I will need to, because it has an A line, I can't just lengthen the bottom of the pattern because of the way that it's shaped. It would come, it wouldn't come out right. It would be a big awkward looking bell. So what I would have to do is I would have to lengthen each piece. Now there's two 
side pieces that run from the bodice all the way down. And then there's this front, pre front piece and then the back is a whole piece. So what I would have to do, and I don't think that was the back, but what I would have to do is cut all of those pieces in half, bring them down, and put a piece of, of um, pattern paper that's eight inches longer in there and kind of piece it together. And then I would have to recut out the pattern to make to lengthen the pattern and you don't usually have to do all of that but the way that this is shaped and the way that the pieces are that's what i would have to do and i really was not wanting to do that so i kind of i cut the pattern out but i kind of set it aside and i'm not sure what i'm going to do i have another dress pattern new dress pattern that i want to try and i that it um it's stops at the bodice and then it has the skirt attached and that's easier to kind of adjust if you need to but this one that would be a lot of cutting and adding in and I didn't think that I wanted to do all that so that was set aside so that's what's under my needle or really not under my needle. A little twist. I have not been spinning um, I don't know if I touched the spindle. I may have touched it since the last podcast. And I know that it only takes about 15 minutes a day, or I heard when you're first starting out, just take 15 minutes a day and practice a little bit and you'll gradually improve. But I have just uh, hesitated about taking my precious knitting time and trying to, if I only have a few minutes to knit or a few minutes to do art, I didn't want to take it to try to learn the spinning. Not at this time. I just had a hard time um, taking myself away from the knitting to try to concentrate on the spinning. So there has not been any twisting lately. I have continued to receive encouraging emails and different tips and tricks, and I am saving them and I'm hoping to get back to them real soon. Um, I do want to um, get a DVD called Drafting, the long and short of it, and really get an understanding of drafting. I've never knit with home or hand spun before, and so I'm not even sure if I'm gonna like it. It's just something that I wanted to try and want to learn, but I have not been doing any of that lately. I did wanna update you all on that though. aspirations. So last podcast, I talked about wanting to cast on the hitchhiker as kind of my on the go mindless knit project. I did pick out a yarn from my stash. This is Misty Alpaca. Um, and it is their hand painted sock yarn, I believe it's 50% alpaca, and it has some nylon and cashmere in it. Um, I'm not sure what the amounts are. But it feels really, really nice and yummy. It's very thin. To me, it looks more of a lace weight than a sock weight. Uh, remember last time I talked about the um, socks that rock? I thought it was a little thicker than sock yarn for me, to me, but this seems a little thinner. So I have a project page all set up on Ravelry. I have this and the pattern all in my knitting bag and it's been sitting in my van with the needles waiting on me to cast it on and I just haven't cast it on. The, the vest has been, it's just stopping net stitch around and around. So it's been portable and easy enough for me to take around wherever I go and I have not needed to, to cast on for this, but it's kind of waiting in the wings and I'm really, really wanting to do it. I also really, really want to cast on Piper's Journey. It's a um, pattern by Paula from the Knitting Pipeline. And it is a shawl. I think I showed that to you all last time. And I've been wanting to cast that on. And that, so that is something I'm thinking of doing when I get done with the vest. But also, I've been thinking of a baby cardi. Um, I do have a couple babies I want to knit for. I have a cousin who had a baby at the end of April. And I have another friend who had a baby at the beginning of January. So I need to knit like a one-year-old 
um, sweater for her. But I was thinking, well, after such a big project like this vest, I probably will want to do something smaller and quicker. And so I'm thinking of the rib party. Um, I thought that was really cute. And I'm thinking of casting that on out of comf Comfy Sport in the cashew colorway. I had um, I have several balls of this from Knit Picks. And I believe it is, uh, it's Pima cotton and acrylic. So not sure how warm that'll be for winter time, but he will be layering it over other clothes. So I think I want to cast that on. So that I'm not sure out of those three, what I'm going to cast on, cast on next, but that's what I'm aspiring to. So what's in my goodie bag? I went to a local yarn shop. It's actually in Indiana. I live in Ohio, but it's in Richmond, Indiana. And it's called the Unwind Yarn Shop. And they are, the owners are moving and they were looking to sell the yarn shop. I don't know yet whether they found a buyer or not, but they were liquidating all of their yarns and they had their yarns marked down. By the time I got there, they were 45 I believe, yes, 45% off. And she still had a lot of yarns there. Their prices are a little higher to begin with than if you, you know, what you would normally buy, but it was still a good deal. I felt kind of overwhelmed. I really did not have a project in mind. So I, it was hard for me to just grab yarn and grab yarn and buy it just because it was on sale. I did go there with the intention of buying more of the Lamb's Pride for Journey to finish her bag. So I got there and they didn't have a co her color, but I thought they had a color that would match. And so I thought I got this purple and I just picked it up thinking, oh, you know, that's a good shade of purple. It'll go with her bag. And I brought it home and she said, what's that for? And I said, well, it's purple. I know it's not the same purple, but it'll go with your bag. She said, mom, that's blue. I said, it is. And here I look on the label and it is blue magic. It was all they had as far as purple. I am slightly colorblind. I guess you would say, well, I really, I don't know if I'm officially colorblind, but I'm really not good with colors at all. So I thought this was blue. I mean, purple and it's actually blue, but she went ahead and used it anyway. So I got two balls of this. I also got, um, I've never used, I've used Cascade before, but this is the 220, 220 Superwash Sport. And it is in the color denim. Doesn't look denim to me, but it's a really pretty blue. I have a few pieces in my wardrobe that I could wear this with. And I was thinking about using this for the Piper's Journey um, shawl. I got three, three balls of that. That would be 20, 40, 60, 660 yards. I believe Piper's Journey suggests about 660, 680. So I'm hoping this will be enough to do the Piper's Journey. But then I'm thinking again, well, I don't know, I may have some other yarns in mind, but this is what I bought that for. And then the last thing that I picked up were shawl pins. I got these Plymouth shawl pins. Um, I wanted to have a shawl pin to kind of wear in the vest and just, you know, I don't have any more shawls yet, but if I did, all I had was like you saw last episode, a DPN to put in my shawl. So. I got a couple of shawl pins and that is what's been in my goodie bag. One more thing I forgot to share with you that's in my goodie bag. I got a bag from Lois who is knitting my bag. She had a contest thread in her group. I think it was for the month of May. May, yes, it was for the month of May and you were supposed to post pictures of your bags that you have from her and each bag was a separate entry and I was chosen by random number generator to receive a free bag and so this is the fabric that I picked out I love children and little ones and these little I believe they're um, I'm not going to even butcher the name of the little wooden dolls that you stack one on top of another and top you know 
one inside another and another and another. I believe that's what these are. Um, shows different little dolls from all over the world or children from all over the world, however you want to look, view it. And so I thought that was really cute. And so thank you, Lois. This is her small bag. And it is it is holding my vest. Um, it's a little tight fit. I would like a bigger bag. And so I contacted Lois about ordering another bag, a medium-sized bag, that will fit my garments better. But this is a really nice and roomy bag. And I thank Lois for her generosity and even running the contest. And... Uh, I was glad to win and glad to get this bag. On my iPod. Well, not too much different has been on my iPod lately. I finally finished all the 30 episodes I needed to catch up with for the Stockinette Zombies podcast. And so now I feel like I'm their biggest fan. It was fun to go through from the beginning and watch as their projects progressed. And I would not let myself kind of skip around and look at the newer ones. And I wanted to see, you know, the projects grow. And so that was fun. So I finished that. I've been watching some other new podcasts. One of them that I recently watched is Knitting in La La Land. And that is hosted by Laura and she lives in Ohio. I believe she's about four hours away from me and she works at Knott's, which is a knitting store in, uh, I can't remember the name of the city, but she works there as a finisher. And um, I'm not sure what else she does there, but she's a very good knitter. And um, she has had her boyfriend on the podcast, the last couple podcasts. And that's been fun. You know, he's, he decided to learn to knit as a birthday gift to her. So it's been fun watching a new knitter get started and especially a male knitter. Her lighting has not always been great, but she is getting better with her lighting. lighting. But it's still fun to just sit down. It's not a real long podcast and she has good knitting and um She's just a fun, fun girl to watch. So I would encourage you to check her out. And hi, Laura, if you're watching this. As far as what audio podcasts I've been listening to, I've still been, excuse me, catching up with Knitting Brooklyn. And I've just been listening to old favorites that have come in. Um, Paula from Knitting Pipeline. And I've been listening to Kagi from the High Fiber Diet. And I've been listening to... Uh, the Knitmore Girls. So I've been kind of catching up with them. It's been really, really hot here and I have not been commuting much because our air is not working in my vehicle. So I don't want to sit in there and roast at 90 degrees. And usually I listen to my audio podcast in my vehicle. So I haven't listened to a lot of audio. And like I said, I just caught up on the Stockinette Zombie. So now I'm thinking, okay, what other podcasts have I not been watching lately that I want to watch. And I've kind of been thinking about um, Knits in Public. Uh, she, I watched her latest episode and I really like her podcast. She doesn't podcast regularly. And sometimes the ones that don't podcast regularly, I usually kind of set those on the back burner. But I think I want to go back and kind of catch up with what's been going on with her. She's been on a a yarn diet since October and she just did her latest podcast and I think she won't be podcasting again for another month. So I might be catching up with her back issues and the Knit Girls. I have not been watching them consistently. So I kind of want to catch up on their uh, back episodes of their podcast. So those are shout outs and that's what's been on my iPod. Okay, for our ASL Minute, last week we learned, hi, how are you? And with SSK coming up, I was wondering, were there any deaf or hard of hearing uh, knitters that were able to attend there? And maybe they didn't even try to get in the lottery because they didn't know if they would be able to communicate with a lot of people there. So I think Learning ASL is, is good. It's easier for hearing people to learn ASL than for deaf or harder hearing people to learn to speak. 
And really, if they learn to speak, that just benefits the hearer. It doesn't really help them much because they still cannot hear what you're speaking back to them. So they are our fellow citizens and our fellow Americans, even in our own country. And so uh, that's another reason why I decided to learn ASL. There's lots of reasons, but that's one I'll share with you. So today we are going to learn my name is. Now, um, when you meet someone and then you greet them with the hi, how are you? Then you want to say my name is and there's no is like we talked about before so you would put your flat hand to yourself that flat hand shows possession my and for name you have like a, a number two closed up and you will have it this way both of your fingers will show uh will be closed and one on top of the other across and then you tap it tw twice name and that's how you sign name so you'll say my name and then you will finger spell your name and i'm going to add a separate um, video after this one and it'll probably be episode 4.5 where i will demonstrate the asl alpha alphabet for those of you who are interested and want to learn i don't want to take up time in the podcast doing that but um you would say my name and i'll finger spell my name d i a n N A. And then if you want to ask their name, you'll point your finger out, showing possession, your name. And you scrunch your eyebrows in, and that's your what. That's like saying what. You don't have to sign what. This will be the sign for what. But you don't have to sign that because your face is going to read it. So you would say, your name? So, my name. And then you finger spell your name and then you'll say your name and then they'll respond back to you. And we will learn uh, more as the episodes go on. So uh, that's our ASL minute. Hi, and welcome to Journey's Journey's part of the podcast. I'm your host for this part of the podcast, Journey. So for this week, um, for knitting, I got done my bag. It's still blocking right now. I have some cows in there. And it's still blocking. But I finished it. Let's see. This is what the finished object will look like. Like this. And it's very pretty. I think it turned out fine. And what I did, I made the strings. I got the strings felted. And I'm going to put them on like this. We haven't made the holes on yet. And then I got on the outside, the pattern didn't call for this, but I want a pocket. So on the outside, I'm going, I made this. Looks like a little swatch, but it's a pocket. And I made it so it'll go on the outside like a little pin pop, if you can put your pin there. And I made another one that you can put on the inside, and it looks like a bigger saw. And it's a little bit bigger than I wanted it to because I expected it to shrink more, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put this on the inside and this one on the outside. And these are the strings. And I did them. I ran out of the dark purple, as you might remember. And I wanted to get it done by the 20th, but I didn't. I just got it done. I just got it finished felting about, I don't know how long ago, about an hour or two. But it's so it is grime or shaping or whatever you want to call it right now. And it's the bottom, the sides. I really like how that it's called um magic blue. And it's this is the bogle back. I really like how that turned out. Let's see. Magic blue. Uh, it looks kind of grayish once it's felted. So that's that. And then I didn't work on anything else this week except for I did do two rows. You probably don't want to see this again, but I did do two rows on. Sorry. 
I did two, two, two rows on this. Here it is. Got it. I have all my stuff for this project and it's back. So I did do two more rows. And see, this is what I mean about knitting with double yarn. I just, I'm going to have to frog it all the way back to here. That's why I stopped knitting on it. But I'm going to have to frog it all the way back to right there. You can see, right there. I left one of the strands behind, and it looks like a big drop stitch. So I'm going to have to frog it all the way back to there and redo that. So I stopped knitting on it for right now. So I frog all the let's see, how many rows is that? Two, four, six. Twelve rows. I have to frog back twelve rows and do that. And then my sock. I don't remember if I showed you it last week. I'll show you it again. Oh, and I, this bag, I got this, this bag. I, I, well, the first podcast I showed you, it was my mom's bag, this bag. And she gave it to me for my birthday. So thank you, Mom, for the bag. I really love this bag. But anyway, on my sock, um... This is a uh, toe up top down sock by Aaron Case. Um, on that part, I was wondering if I should frog it back. And my mom said she didn't know what happened to it. But she said to show it on the podcast. So I was going to just frog it back, but she said to show it. So I want to know what you think if I should keep going or if I should frog it back and try to do that without it like turning out like that. It looks really awkward, but, and this is in the bamboo and you yarn, super fine wool bamboo blend, and it's some really soft, really pretty purple yarn, it's purplish yarn, let's see, let me get that on there, but yeah, so that's that, and for this week, that's all the knitting I have been doing, I have not been doing much knitting because I've been doing other things like, I don't know, other things. So, um, thank you for watching Journey's Journey, part of the podcast. So, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast today. Uh, for our knitting circle, I wanted to talk about uh, our next contest, which will be July share. And I'll open up a thread for that. And I will ask you to share in that thread. And um, at the end of July or my first episode in August, I'll draw names. And once again, I'd like to share with the viewers, one viewer, a $7 giftable Ravelry pattern. But I was thinking I didn't get to share with you all um, the last podcast because it ended up going long. But there, we had pretty bad storms here in Ohio, and our uh, modem got hit by lightning. And actually, when the lightning hit, uh, I was in my room, and it was at night, and I actually, I was sitting on the bed, and I was knitting, and I saw the lightning. I have never seen this before, but I saw the lightning come in through the window and kind of spark, and there was a, uh, like a big pillow on the floor. Uh, one of those pillows with arms that you use to sit up in the bed. And it looked like it hit the pillow. And later on, when I looked the pillow, looked at the pillow, I was looking for a burn mark and I didn't find any. But it looked like the lightning hit the pillow. But at the time, nobody else saw it. I mean, they knew that the computer had went out and it ended up messing up our computer. I can't even see really well the colors that you all are seeing or anything. I think we need an another video card. We were without internet for a few days because lightning had hit the modem. And so, but uh, the point was when I was sitting there knitting and the lightning came in and I was knitting on this vest and I think I was at a uh, part that I need to concentrate on. And it was like the lightning came in and I thought to myself, I just saw lightning come in. But at the same time, my mind was so occupied with what I was doing in my knitting 
that it didn't register and it didn't scare me. And after I got done with the part that I needed to get done with, then I went and told the family, I saw that lightning bolt come in. Did you all see that come in? But I don't, you know, I think the knitting had me so focused that when the lightning came, I just didn't, you know, and oh no, oh no, because it was, it was, and also with having seven children, you know, uh, I'm not easily excited. You know, I hear screams or cries and I know a, I'm hurt cry or I'm, I'm mad cry or I just need attention cry. So, you know, I'm not really an excitable person, but lightning is usually exciting to me. But there was something about I was so concentrated on my knitting. I saw the lightning come in. I saw it spark. I saw it hit the pillow. And I just, my mind was occupied. And so I just, oh my, there's lightning. Then I finished up what I was doing, put down my knitting, and then we started getting really excited. So I wanted you all to share, has there ever been a time where there's been a specific happening? And we've heard lots of good, um, lots of good reasons or meanings of what knitting is and what it does for you personally. But I would like for you to share in this thread a time where you were knitting or you were in a situation that doesn't have to be such an exciting situation or, or anything, I mean, like that, but a situation where the knitting kind of, you were focused on your knitting and it really just was something remarkable, but your knitting kind of kept you grounded, kind of like ground wire. So I think that would be fun to share. So I will open up a thread. And if you have something that you would like to share, please be a member of the group. And I would love to read it. And again, I would encourage other members to go in and read the threads, read the introductions. Some people have taken time to really list good introductions. It's been really good to get to know people. Read the um, what knitting is or means to you thread. Um, I really appreciated all of those. One, um, and then post in this this thread if you if you feel inclined and let us know share with us a situation that has happened so we'll look forward to that thank you for joining us today for the sitting and knitting or sitting and knitting i'm sorry sitting and knitting podcast Justice did want me to give her apologies. She has been swimming all week and reading all week, and she really has not picked up her needles, and so she didn't want to come on and share anything on the podcast today. So there, that's why there was no uh, Justice's Court today, but she is doing well, and she just didn't knit, so that was why you missed her. You can find show notes on the blog, sittingandknittingpodcast.blogspot.com. Thank you so much. I feel I should just slam it down on the table and walk away madly. Cause my stitches don't count up and I missed a cable. This yarn's not the size that it says on the label.